Today on Gamers Couch... Smash! Kill! Become King of New York! Hello hey. everybody! Last Christmas Gamers Couch of 2014 is about to be... Whew, we were on... so close of her singing last Christmas, so... No, I was going for Let It Snow, but the, our version of it, and I promise you I won't, because uh, you might... Have vomiting just, um, yeah. things, and the microphone might break, and my hubby might go insane. Break. Everything's going to break. Just like New York. <laughs> How thematic. Yeah, is, uh, just a quick question. The, uh, the, the name Brooklyn, does it have anything to do with anything broken? Is there... A similar family like roots where the word comes from or is it just no I was just asking I was curious Brooklyn Brooklyn <laughs> oh boy no now for real so we're gonna tell you all about the rules and gameplay before we go into likes and dislikes and then have very funny stories and experiences of one two King of New York. No, you should hold up the box when I... See, that uh, we are again terrible at this. Uh, if I'm not in charge of holding the box up, obviously someone else is not able to do it if, if the box because is on Because you side. always so today, hold it up and have it we talk nicely about with the antlers. King of New York, which is totally not in Japan. Which, like similar to another game, which may be happening in Tokyo. However, as you may see, this is the spiritual successor. I don't really want to call it a sequel to King of no. Tokyo because it's uh, it improves upon that, but you can play them distinct um, from each other, and some folks like Tokyo better than New York. Uh, and there's, uh, I guess, valid reasons for uh, well liking the one over the other. So let's get started. And I, I will, apart from throwing things uh, around, I will uh, probably heavily reference King of Tokyo. Uh, for one, we already talked about this in, in an earlier episode, not of Gamers Couch, but... Um, Talk O'Clock. Talk O'Clock. When uh, both still were combined. And uh, this is very similar in a lot of ways. Yep. Uh, so the question is, what are the interesting changes? So the game happens to... Uh, Actually, this way around, the, this game takes place in, surprise, surprise, New York. Um, and here's the first difference you see uh, from King of Tokyo. You have way more areas to be in. You have Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, Staten Island, and the center, Manhattan, which is uh, very similar to being in Tokyo as uh, in that other game. So Manhattan is the area you want to go in to, to score additional points. And this time around, Manhattan is actually divided up into three spaces. So the idea is the longer you stay in Manhattan, the more points or the more bonuses you're getting each turn. And again, the same old rule, you are not to, allowed to heal in Manhattan as you are not allowed to heal when staying in Tokyo. Um, so let's get us a bit back and take a look at who are we and what we do we want to do. So in the similar way in like uh, the last episode, this is a perfect game for your family at Christmas. Not because you're lying uh, towards each other, but because you may be Captain Fish. Or this cowboy dinosaur. Called Sheriff. Or this mantis with the chainsaw for hands. Or this, well, whatever dragon robot with a huge Traconis. gun. Traconis. The real king. Kong. <laughs> I'm just reading. And robot dude with multiple lights is ahead. Called? Rob. Because we got the... Players mats down here where 
the characters' names are mentioned. So you are playing amazing, fun, giant, kaiju-esque monsters that are, uh, well, similar to the likes of Godzilla, King Kong, and any other big beast that lays wreck to a city. Um, and your goal is, well, score as many points. With, score more points than everybody else at the table and win by becoming the king of New York. So you start the game out, every monster starts in a in a in a district and uh, there's never you may never have more than two monsters in one district. And uh, each turn you have to roll dice. You may roll up to three times, selecting which dice to keep and which to go out, very Yahtzee-like uh, to that, with uh, some of the biggest dice uh, you may have ever seen in a regular game, which are these beautiful green dice. And these are already all the symbols on there. Um, there's uh, a claw to punch other <laughs> other monsters, um, there's energy which gives you little energy cubes to buy stuff, there's a heart that allows you to uh, well, stitch wounds up and Ew. heal. And new to this one, uh, and different from King of Tokyo, you don't have any direct uh, victory points anymore to roll, but instead you have three new symbols, one for breaking houses, uh, one for uh, well invoking the military, and one for becoming the superstar, and I'll go into that right away. So, um, as you may f be familiar with the old system, uh, with those three rules, um, if you punch someone and you're not in Manhattan, you always punch the monster in Manhattan. If you happen to be in Manhattan yourself, you punch everybody who's not in Manhattan. So. Again, the tactical decision there, how long do you want to stay in Manhattan because you're not allowed to heal in Manhattan? And how much damage can you dish out to everybody else and keep them on the defensive, uh, keep them healing up and trying to get off your back? Um, talking about the new symbols, the easiest one to explain is the star for becoming the superstar, which is actually a card in the game. So the idea here is if you roll three stars, you will get this card and this is worth bonus points as long as you have the card. If someone else rolls three stars afterwards, he gets the card and so the entire thing shifts around. Um, then you're allowed to break houses and the way that works is you have little, little piles of houses which look like these in each district and once you destroy a house, so let's say this one says two here, so you have to roll two of these uh, destroy house symbols to say, okay, I want to claim that. You get a reward for this, which is in this case two hearts. So this heals you and this may even heal you in uh, if you're in Manhattan. And then it gets flipped over to the red side. And the red side is similar to that, You but there you have to roll three to destroy it in this case and you would then get uh, two energy. Which brings us to bonuses, and there's only three different ways uh, of bonus items to get. It's either you are getting hearts life, um, which obviously only makes sense if you already lost life. You uh, may get energy, or you may get a victory point. If you turn over the symbol to the red side, and someone in your space rolls a... Oh, I have to find it again. Rolls a, <laughs> rolls a skull then you suffer one damage per every red tile that is in your area. If someone rolls two skulls, he damages... Well, let me back that up. If you roll a skull and have some red thing in your area, you get damage. If you roll two skulls, you and everybody else in that area gets damage. If you roll three skulls, Everybody in the on the entire game board suffers damage for those red tokens that are in their space. So that may be a really good way to dish out a lot of damage to everybody else. Um, and also because you're one of the defenders of the city, you ally up with the Statue of Freedom. Liberty, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Americans, uh, we are Europeans. We don't have to know about your... We don't have liberty, we just have we, freedom. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to, to know 
enough about our French exports to to your I was coast. just about to say there's one of these in Paris. Yeah, the other one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, if you do this one, you also get points similar to the superstar thing um, while holding on to that, which uh, is a nice way to to get get some points. Um, yeah, other other things uh, you I've mentioned the energy uh, cubes. Uh, these are the little, almost looking like mint drops again. So great for little children who consider these uh, edible and may choke on them. So maybe not play it with a three-year-old. Um, or if, even, tell them even if Captain Fish is looking and great. keep a close eye on them when you play with the little ones, or if you play with. The big ones. The big ones that are either drunk or weird or otherwise intoxicated. <laughs> just, just saying, safety first. When breaking New York, <laughs> you always have to have a band-aid with you. When you break New York, wow. No, we're, oh gosh. We're, we're not drunk yet. No, it's it, just coffee. <laughs> it, it may happen sooner or later. So. What can you buy with these energy cubes? There's uh, always a stack of cards. Uh, there's three cards open to choose from, and each card uh, has a cost attached to it. Uh, like this one costs six energy. Another one may be available for three energy. And these cards almost always have some benefit that is granted to you, either as a permanent thing or something that you may play on a certain situation. So uh, these ones say in, in blue, keep, or in German, behalten. Uh, or in, and there's your German lesson of the day. Or in red, which would be discard or abwerfen for one-time bonus. And most of these uh, either give you victory points or allow you to heal even though you may not be able to heal something or to ignore certain kinds of damage um, or get more victory points from destroying some kind of houses. There's one that's really good against uh, air, uh, airplanes or fighter yeah. jets and then these are the fighter jets to, to help you do that. So you keep on um, trying to get victory points by smashing houses, by staying in Manhattan, um, or alternatively to eliminate other players. So every player has one of these scoreboards where you conveniently can keep track of your, uh, of your victory points up here. Um, and if one player goes up to 20, he immediately wins the game. Another way to win the game is to kill everybody else, and just as in real life, um, so if you if uh, every other player, or if a player is reduced to zero health, they are out of the game at once. And you do that until you're the last beast standing. And that is... Then all, New York is all yours! That is that is everything about King, King of New York. It's a quite simple game. It is yeah. uh, very... It's fast. Very... Uh, Similar to games like Yahtzee, where you just have to roll uh, three times to get a certain outcome. Um, it says, so the King of New York, I think, is supposed to last a little bit longer with 40 minutes a session. Um, I think King of Tokyo, can you see what it's saying there? I think it says... I'm just going to go out of frame for a sec. I think King of Tokyo was uh, set for a 30 minutes, um, which... Uh, Let me see... Be... Says the girl from the off. So and now she's back in screen, and uh, it says, "Here we go." Thirty minutes. Oh, I'm good. And it's um, eight years and older, and King of New York is ten years and older. So, uh, <coughs> Sorry. If you want to have the comparison between both King of Tokyo, King of New York, um, and well. The short, the short thing to say about both of them, um, King of Tokyo is a simpler game, um, just by virtue of not having all this stuff with houses going on that you may crash. You don't have to consider uh, ways to hurt other players by invoking the military action. Um, um, but you're not really moving. Yeah, through the boroughs, because in, uh, in, in Tokyo, in New York, blah, in Tokyo, there's just yeah, Tokyo, Tokyo City, Tokyo Bay, if you play with more than four players, or yeah. everywhere 
else. Does, so there's yeah, Tokyo. No... Tokyo has just the question: Are you in Tokyo or are you uh, not in yeah. Tokyo? And uh, King of New York is a little bit more complicated. You could be in different districts, and even in Manhattan, you can be in different districts of Manhattan. Which either, and I, I didn't say that earlier, but the bonuses you you get um i said it, it raises up so uh, you start down here in the first round once you enter tokyo uh, once you enter <laughs> see what i did there once you enter manhattan uh, and similar to tokyo you get a star but just by entering so one victory point and every turn you stay in here you get plus one victory point and one energy so which that is, is new, new. Um, and then you advance immediately to the center where you get two victory points each turn and one energy and uh, then you advance again and at the end you get for each turn two victory points and two energy. So the you could say there's a bigger incentive for uh, players to stay in Manhattan because you will get way more points um, whereas in Tokyo it was just like uh, try to hold up as long as you can yeah. and you just get one point which on the grand scale of things, I think didn't make that much of a difference. It was, no. In fact, I I have more. I could remember more sessions of King of Tokyo where it was more important not to be in Tokyo yeah. due to not being able to heal there, yeah. or to be in Tokyo just to well hit everybody else rather than um, getting a victory point each turn, um, yeah. which uh, is one of the other things to pay attention to. Yeah. So, what did you like about King of New York? And on the extended, uh, what do you like? I'm, I'm just calling it a franchise because it's the same world with the monster. It's pretty much the same concept of games. So, um, I want to know what you like about King of New York, what you dislike, and where the difference for you is between uh, King of Tokyo and King of New York. Um, I I very much like that King of New York adds some more options of how to well not necessarily how to win but more choices per turn um, to uh, take care of. Um, I have to say that I kind of found the being able to roll victory points directly on the dice in King of Tokyo a bit boring because yeah you can roll three threes and then you get three victory points directly but then. There's nothing really happening there. There's no interaction. You don't do anything to any other player or you don't trigger some special ability or something like that. Um, and to be fair, I'm just comparing that with King of Tokyo without the expansion, which... Yeah. Um, without the power ups. Yeah, which... Uh, uh, where I, whereas I would say the power up uh, expansion or the Hollywood uh, Halloween expansion for King of Tokyo greatly enhanced that mm -hmm. game as well uh, by adding some new interesting things like being able to uh, generate new powers by rolling hearts early on and kind of use them. Yeah, uh, and here in King yeah. of New York hearts ag are again because they kind of well, they. I think you could mix them together without having too much problems. The issue there is that the power-up expansion is very uh, centered around the monsters of King of Tokyo. Uh, but in King of New York, you have the same problem at the beginning of the game again. If you roll hearts, they're essentially worthless um, because you haven't taken any damage uh, yet. Um, but New York, as I as I was saying, uh, is way more thinky in terms of. Uh, do you want to directly attack other monsters? Then you can do that. Do you want to, uh, well, crash buildings and maybe leave the district you're in, kind of creating traps everywhere for all the other monsters to be? Um, or do you want to directly go uh, for a similar path as you would may have done in Tokyo by going to Manhattan and punch all the other guys and try to do as much damage each turn to keep them off your back and keep them on the they have to stay healing uh, each other and um, doing that or um, if you want uh, you could go after the the superstar and then get points by rolling stars uh, which I forgot to mention so if you get that card not only uh, do you uh, get points for getting the card but you also now get points for the stars you roll so that is kind of the same thing as um, the one two three sides in King of Tokyo um, obviously components artwork and all that is great I mean there's the the monsters are just lovely to, to look at I mean there's a 
there's a whale in a fishbowl that is the head of a giant diving suit with a, a ship as an weapon. I mean, yeah, there's no way to argue around that. Uh, and I can see that a lot of kids really like that yeah. for being the awesome monster and that is running around and impersonating you. He's my favorite, but. the sheriff. I just love him. <laughs> <laughs> York is mine. <laughs> it just looks so weird. <laughs> Uh, that that all that all being said, um, that is certainly not a negative for for me. But I can see the argument. Um, uh, King of New York is a bit more involved than King of Tokyo. So if you're playing with uh, well your grand grandparents on Christmas, and they don't play games at all, or you really want to something want to play something really simple, you may want to go and play King of Tokyo as a kind of uh, entry gateway game to, to get, get them playing. Um, yeah. You can play King of Tokyo without almost without any explanation at all. You can start playing that game and before the first game ends everybody will understand how everything works. I'm not saying that this isn't possible with King of New York. Uh, it is certainly uh, still a simple game in, if you're playing this with other folks who play games regularly. But if you're just looking at it from an angle saying this is just a pure family game uh, and play this with people who have never or haven't played games in a long time and only know like Sorry or, or let's say Monopoly, um, Monopoly or something like that, um, then that might be uh, a bit overwhelming and again you could ignore some of the rules. You could leave out the, the buildings on your first play and introduce those uh, a little, little bit later yeah. um, and just pretend that the uh, according symbols is just worth a victory point similar to the superstar thing. Um, yeah. But overall, uh, so the question for me, if I would would have been asked, uh, do you want to get King of Tokyo or do you want to get King of New York or does King of New York replace King of Tokyo? Um, personally, for me, King of New York has replaced King of Tokyo because I really like the more involved gameplay of King of New York um, if it comes to enjoying playing the game by uh, by itself. But I understand that there's... Uh, a valid argument being made if you want a game to play with smaller children and mm -hmm. uh, King of Tokyo is rated two years below King of New York um, or if you want to play uh, if you like King of Tokyo for the fact that it's so easy to bring out and uh, have not a lot of rules being explained um, uh, about that uh, then that is great as well um, so my personal preference I lean more towards King of New York because I um, almost always will prefer a more tactical uh, a game that has more interesting decisions going on over a game where you just roll the dice and um, or are more relying on good lucky rolls rather than uh, making uh, an interesting decision every time. So um, yeah, if, if you ask me, I, I prefer King of New York over King of Tokyo and I could be perfectly fine with uh, now never playing King of Tokyo again. Uh, obviously, I still also like King of with Tokyo. The, so. with the uh, power charges or, or with the with the expansion packs that included or just the base box game. Uh, with the with so with the expansions, I think King of Tokyo gets the critical mass to to be uh, interesting in a different way. Okay. Now, if the power ups are out for, and I'm, I'd be surprised. I'm wondering. If they don't, if, I'm, don't I do guess that. there will. Be um, some on uh, or even, New York. Even if you just go in and combine the power-ups and house rule a bit of the power-ups that might not be uh, applicable, then that would be like a really, really cool game for me because there's even more things to uh, to think about if you want to <laughs> bring that out. And, and yeah. I see. <laughs> so what about you? Well, you know... Uh, the I good New York. The good thing in a marriage, we don't have to be of the same opinion. And for me, just to start it like that, King of New York did not replace King of Tokyo. And here's why. I love King of New York. I'm really, really happy that this game turned out as well as it did. While they announced the new game and you heard a 
bit of a, the buzz. I was like, oh, please let it be good and not just be the sequel, right? So um, they definitely fixed all the things that I thought could be enhanced with King of Tokyo, but they didn't screw anything up. So that's a good thing. And aside from the beautiful and lovely, lovely artwork again, the new concept and the new rules are very good with King of New York. However, why, why, why it did not replace it for me, um, I think for a two-player game, just quick and dirty, like quicks and love letter and whatnot, <laughs> Jesus Christ. How am I supposed to keep it together? King of, no uh, King of <laughs> King of Nougat, which is a, a new chocolate-themed expansion. King of Nokio. <laughs> saying. King of Tokyo is the one that I put on the table with uh, two players, and that I'm also taking to my parents. Uh, that's that's more a game. Like a dinner game, 30 minutes, um, love letter quicks, universe. So it moved into the it moved <laughs> into the dinner game section. King of New York is the game that is uh, a proper game. It's not a dinner game for me, and I uh, I love it more with more than two players. So if you're three to six people go for King of New York. I'd say if you're just two and just want some quick round of something instead of going for maybe Quicks, which is another dice rolling game, go for King of Tokyo. And if you um, don't have any of the games on your shelf yet, I would recommend King of New York because you can quote unquote strip it down to the gameplay that King of Tokyo had. So. Like he said, with a bit of house ruling, you can strip down the game to the uh, quote-unquote simple basic that King of New uh, King of Tokyo was. So instead of spending fifty bucks, you just spend twenty-five by buying one box. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, so I understood that King of Tokyo is not a real game. It's a dinner game now for me. It's it's not a, a suck at Richard Garfield. My wife thinks that the King of Tokyo is not a real game. That's not <laughs> what I said. I said it's a dinner game, which is we play <laughs> dinner games way more often than other games, just because they're only fifteen I, to I'm thirty sorry. minutes. It is it is a game, just not a proper one. No, it's like I'm. I, what I mean by proper is like. <laughs> Uh, for me, this is <laughs> no. This is not even a starting the gaming night game or ending it. It's like the mid section where we play one game more than once. Like um, it, it's in the realm of Quirkle, uh, Camel Cup. I'm looking at the gaming shelf. Sorry for that. I'm looking at her and uh, Ticket to Ride. Um, concept, these kinds of games, I would see it in that kind of a family. Um, it's not the super, super difficult, it's the family kind of games, but it's the one, the, the midsection of your gaming night. It's not the starter and it's not the dessert. I, I would also like to add, um, I would say that uh, depending on the group size, um, for two to four players, I'd rather play King of New York. But if you're going over into the range four to six players, I might think that King of Tokyo is even a little bit better suited due to the fact that it is simpler and plays quicker. Um, I that's that's curious. Also, uh, well, and also it depends. Obviously, if you have a if you have a well uh, well dressed well trained group, <laughs> also if they're well dressed, it, it helps. helps. It helps if they look like this monster um, with a bow. <laughs> uh, if you if you have a have a, have a group of six who all are heavily into into games and and know Ooh. that game by heart and you've played so far, yeah, it goes. Uh, it's just as you quick. will probably play King of New York as quickly. But if you yeah. have like for some reason a party going on and end up being six people wanting to play a game of monsters and uh, three of them know the game, three maybe don't know the game. King of Tokyo is way, as I said, yeah. it's, a, it's more a gateway it's game. Simpler. It depends a bit on yeah. the audience. And also, um, there's um, the rounds 
just by virtue of ha having less to do or less to think about in each turn are uh, over quicker in King of Tokyo than yeah. they are in King of New York. Yeah. It's like like I said, it's the stripped down version of mm -hmm. King of New York. So it's like um, um, it's like uh, the breakfast pancakes, but uh, King of New York added the maple syrup to the breakfast. So the what I what I mean to say is that King of Tokyo itself is an awesome game. Mm -hmm. King of New York just top that. It it doesn't make King of Tokyo a bad game or a, a weird game. Then it it's just a dinner game for me now and not one that I play more than five rounds but I, in I, one go. I would still stand by the opinion that you would own in most cases you would be fine owning just one or the other uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, as soon as you can kind of identify what um what for what kind of situation which one you want to play or which one comes up more for you mm -hmm. um Choose. then one of one of those two yeah. would be enough um i mean if you really like these kinds of games chances are we are talking to you and you already own both of them so. yeah well, it's quite or, likely. or you already own King of Tokyo and think now about upgrading to King of King of New York, which I hopefully will. Avoid. But maybe Santa brings King of New York to you. Yeah. So, so King of King of New York is a is a great enhancement to yeah. to King of Tokyo, and if you already own King of Tokyo, at least give it a look and see if that is enough to well get you over to buying um, King of New York, and if not, it's not a bad thing i mean it's uh it's a it's as, as sarah said it's a it's a great game anyway uh both yeah. are great games anyway um yeah they're standalone but they can be they can um benefit from each other as well so yeah let's go to rating one to awesome for king of new york only Three mon three monster parade out of. There's six on the table. No. Oh, oh, oh. No. <laughs> oh, hold on, I'm gonna write. <laughs> six six monster monsters. parade. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Actually, so I, we could even give that a seven month monster parade. Where's the? No. You, you put it away. Yeah. The alpha zombie, which is the extra character or the bonus character that we got because we bought the game at Spiel. Um, that is... From uh, Zombie 15, the tie-in character. Yeah. Which is also a new game that, that came out. Looks good, which right? we don't own, but I, I there's a great One review day. of uh, Shut Up and Sit Down about it, um, which makes it sound interesting. It's a zombie game that is uh, played in a 15-minute uh, timed chunk. So... So do you want to ask me what? I, how do I rate the game? No, we're fine. See you later next time. Goodbye. Oh, you don't want to open the advent calendar no, that they don't have to see that. I, You're I, not going to open that last box if it's not on the gamer's couch. Maybe they're not interested in it. I mean for you. The, the um, condition is do that you... Do you want to say if you like the game yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Does it happen now? <laughs> yes. From Go on! I was <gasps> taking in breath to be able to speak. Anyways, um. Start any when you like. Now, for example. Shh, be quiet. Did you so, already start? <laughs> Don't do the microphone irritation. So. My, <laughs> my rating is uh, from one to awesome. Uh, that's my scale, and of course. All of them? So and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and awesome. Mm -hmm. So it gets one to awesome, or is it? That's my scale. Oh. I said okay. I can rate from one to awesome. I have more than you, which. <laughs> so did you? Now I'm confused. Did you rate this game? No, already? not yet. <laughs> What my <laughs> so 
see <laughs> see how her face gets to the same color as the end. <laughs> Damn it. Anyways, awesome. That's the game. Ten. A solid <laughs> good ten. Screw this. Awesome. Go away. I don't care. <laughs> Shut up, honey. I'm talking. So, no, for reals, no. Who breathing? My rating is awesome because it's an awesome game and it just has everything that I expect in a dice rolling game. Yahtzee kind monster world game that has the silly monsters that also appear in videos sometimes. This is not a Godzilla movie, honey. We're shooting Gamers Couch, not the new Godzilla. Oh, so I kind of a Oh, Sharon. <laughs> so now that we got the rating done, and who we we are in the third section of of uh, the <laughs> <laughs> we're here shooting a video. It's great that you get so off track immediately. So who we are in the third chapter of the usual gamer's couch format, which is experiences and funny stories. So you've got a pretty good run now laughing, <laughs> so you might just go ahead and tell a funny I, story. I, I, no, I don't remember any story. Oh, well, it's one of the things that my dad and I like to do is play King of Tokyo. And he likes the game so much because he always wins. I never won against the king in Tokyo and uh, he does that in well such subtle ways like six claws in one go very subtle dad and uh, he he's killing me rather quickly there so it's no it's well it's not seldom that we have 11 rounds in one hour just because I die so quickly even with the Android. Uh, as with King of New York, I'm just remembering, well, it, it it's something, other way around. Do you ever have that moment when you play a board game and you think, wow, the gameplay is just like in real life? So when playing King of New York for the first time with my hubby, he was making a big mess. In all of the boroughs, other than Queens, because I was in Queens, because, well, I'm, my last name means king, so, of course, me being female, I'm in Queens. I start there every time, it's just <laughs> simple. So, um, he was making a mess, a mess in all of the other boroughs, and then, once the military showed up, he was like, la, 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 going across the board. Hey, I'm going to visit my monster wife in Queens and then I'm safe. And uh, then I had to go to Manhattan. And after that, with still the mess in all the boroughs, I had to move out to Manhattan and Queens was occupied with more than one monster. So I couldn't go there. And of course, I had to go into the dangerous boroughs and it will and clean up, which is like in real life. It's like, honey, really? I got to do the housework now. <laughs> As a monster, you make the city work. <laughs> it's just like, mm. <laughs> yeah. I could get caught in my finger by all the glass that somehow happened to be on the floor and in New York it's a missile from the military <laughs> that's in your face so yeah it's not really funny but it's like oh, I know that so well <laughs> I am thinking really hard but this game is a testament for parents are all uh, bad like yeah evil yeah very evil I uh, we I think it was we played King of New York with my parents and my no, mom. Tokyo. Oh, we played oh. Tokyo with them. One of one of those we we played with my parents and my my mom, inconspicuously just asked. So, um, 
what happens if I have to turn the victory points over 20? There's only 20 there. Is it? What do you mean? Are you already at 20? Yes, then you already won the game. <laughs> Why do... Oh, I'm... Oh, I didn't notice. I already forgot. I'm, I'm just good at winning. I just but, like to roll dice. It doesn't matter yeah. if I win. Yeah, yeah, mom. <laughs> right. Terrible. Yeah. But anyways... They enjoyed the game and, I mean, especially for your dad who likes monster movies a lot. Come on, this is the perfect True. game to bring True. to your parents' house and have him yeah. be a monster as well. So, there you have it, uh, King of New York with a little throwback episode to King of Tokyo. Yeah. Because, yes, they are, well, a family of family games. Yeah. So, uh, now... I know you are very sad about that, but next week you cannot wear the Santa hat anymore because it's not Christmas. So I can shave because then I don't have to stand no, outside. No, 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 and, no, no, uh, no, that's not. And hold little kids on my arm. and. You do that? Isn't, when? Isn't that why I have to wear this? No, you didn't want to wear the antlers. I actually wanted you yeah, to because, wear the antlers. Because if Cause you... he, looks, he looks really cute with the antlers. But that's but... only because if, if, if you or, or whoever wears the antlers has to go out and, and draw or drag the damn sled in the cold. I'm... I'm but that... that honey, does that but mean you weren't outside when... dragging the sled? No, no, no. I mean, you would be the we, perfect, you would be the perfect reindeer because we usually go out together to go to the grocery store and it's his job every week to push the, the cart. So you, push, would be, not. you could also pull it, that's fine. So you would be the perfect reindeer at the grocery store. <laughs> Can we do that next year? No. Of course not. Anyways, you were a very lovely Santa. So, uh, that's why you are uh, allowed to open your last advent calendar box for 2014. Then you have to wait a whole other 11 months until you get the next one. Oh, don't be sad, boy. Don't be sad. Don't be sad. Otherwise, I'm going to hit you with a box over your head that, until you that, smile. So, that was the... The heavy heavy, one. heavier one. I don't. Is it still December? I don't know. No, this doesn't seem to be December. I don't know. And this I'm is, not saying. You seem to have packed this the wrong way because this is the bottom. Just open it. It seems to be. Let's find out what we have this time. And uh, again, this. Uh, I let me. Try to well, be wait, wait, wait. I'm as quick wait. as possible. Ah, there. If you're a litter as a wife, why I got mm, use scissors. So I I did not try to look into this. However, when uh, vacuuming the living room, I accident I <laughs> yeah. accidentally got this. So you gotta vacuum. <laughs> so it's time. make me beautiful. It's time for <laughs> make me beautiful. Now, now the uh, the reindeer has golden locks. And I'm 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 curious there. what's what's in here. Could be a game, don't you think? It is probably a game, but uh, I have no idea what kind of game or what game this might be. Because I didn't tell you. We will find out. Yes. Are you ready? I'm so ready. You sure? Yeah. It's so the let's, last one, let's, last let's unboxing. Find, let's find out together. And this time, I get it. <gasps> and I didn't pack it the wrong way. No, I turned it over. Oh, and I did pack it the wrong way. Another one of, no, I'm sorry for the glare, but uh, another one of the games to play with your friends. But this time it's not only lying to them, but also stabbing them in the back and killing them. It's every horror movie made into a game. And now we have to learn it until New Year's Eve because then we are four players and we can play it with my parents. We can stab them. Yeah, you realize that this is yeah, they get, a lot of English. They get an English lesson for free. <laughs> because 
that is also a game where someone has to, or the evil guy has to read mm -hmm. things by yeah, himself. Yeah, you're and always understand. evil. You're the Cylon. You can read English. It's a very fascinating game. I'm looking forward to playing this um, simply because it is cooperative until the twist happens and someone turns out to be an evil backstabber. And the best thing is, in most cases, the evil backstabber does not know that he is the evil backstabber beforehand. Yeah. So, yeah, looking, looking forward to being betrayed at the house on the hill. Am I beautiful? You're very, very... Very what? <laughs> Thought so, I was silly, huh? You're so, <laughs> Dumb. so you're so golden. <laughs> you're so, so very antler. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ow! <laughs> My head full, I know. Anyways, I want to take this off, so we so, have to wrap up the video. Thank you. You're most welcome, my dear. For all the adventuring we did now with the last four weeks. It oh! Is, that is the... Does it have a die? Did I stay in the... It has dice. Yeah, so December was okay. Good thing. Yeah, the locks are coming down. I'm letting my hair down. <laughs> Let your hair down, woman. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for this lovely advent calendar gift. I enjoyed it throughout the last four weeks a lot. And uh, we to hope all you of enjoyed you, it as well. Yeah, to all of you, we wish you a very, very Merry Christmas and enjoy a couple of quiet days with your loved ones. And we're going to see you for the already announced very special episode of Gamer's Couch on the 28th. Is it 28th? 30, 29, yeah, 28. It is in, in a week. In a week. And it's a, again, very special one because we, we, oh, we, that, that was the German. Because we, we wish are, you a very Christmas. We are going to review the year. And until then, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Say goodbye. Und a Tannenbaum to you. And now it's starting to rain and I hope this is not on camera. Wow, this is like a winter storm that we're having. Anyway, goodbye. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Have fun. Take care. Play a lot of games with your yes. family. Lie yes. to them yes. and steal their points. Make friends just to crush them yeah. as a monster. Do that. Goodbye. Do all of the good things. Bye.